everyone, today we'll be talking about a piece of tech I discovered quite a while back that I like to call the Water Bolt. Uh, kind of like a Piston Bolt, it uses weird mechanics to move a minecart at relatively high speeds. Though, unlike a Piston Bolt, it, well, obviously uses water instead of pistons. This makes the Water Bolt overall a bit simpler than a Piston Bolt, though it is also not quite as fast as a Piston Bolt. In this case, it's only slightly slower, but that's just because we're using the simplest possible piston bolt. There are definitely faster ones out there, including some that go over twice as fast as a water bolt. Also, water bolts are only really good on bedrock. Meanwhile, on Java, they don't, they're not particularly fast. The main idea here is, uh, well, we use water to push it to the side, but then because the rails are curved, that forces it to go forward instead. So overall pretty simple. Um, but yeah, you can actually have, there's kind of two versions. There's the unwaterlogged and waterlogged variant. Um, they, they go the same speed. The speed it ends up going actually depends on what kind of momentum the minecart has. So like a normal minecart has the worst momentum when it's empty and then full momentum when it's full. While chess mine circuit cards are the opposite, empty is full momentum and full is worst momentum. So uh, if you see this here, yeah, as you can see, there's a huge discrepancy in how fast it goes. So at full speed, it goes up to 16 meters per second, but with the empty regular minecart, it only goes at 10 meters per second. Uh, let's actually just quickly go over how you would build it. First of all, it's slightly different based on if you're going uh, south or east versus north or west. Easiest way to do that is to face the direction that you're wanting to travel and place these three rails, then place that. And if it curves towards you, that's bad news. If it curves away from you, that's good news. To go south or east, uh, you start by putting two rails there and then one there. And now you do two rails, break that rail, break that rail and put it back, two rails, break that one, break that one, put it back, two rails, break that one, break that one, put it back, and you just do that all the way across. And very important to remember that whether you're making it waterlogged or not, the side that it curves towards is the side the water needs to flow from. If you want to go north or west, one way to do it is to start by powering all of the spots and then uh, do it mostly the same way as before, but you need to make sure to break this one and put it back before you break this rail. Um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, you can just do that if you want to. Alternatively, you can do this way instead where you just power it each time. So you do that, power it, and now break that rail. Do that, power it, break that rail. So basically you just power it instead of breaking it and putting it back. And if you're doing it this way, uh, you can break this rail before powering it and you'll be fine. Here's also an, an alternative way of doing the water in case you don't want to have to place as much water that I kind of found out like right as I was making this video. Um, yeah, basically the pattern here is you would have a stairs uh, going parallel to the line, skip four, hole, skip one, and then stairs. And then, yeah, you just repeat that uh, make sure to include the final hole and then you just go through and close those off and waterlog the stairs and yeah a lot less water used so that's good I guess now obviously with all these curved rails uh, it's t definitely possible that something might go wrong and at that point it may seem kind of impossible to fix well uh, it isn't actually possible to fully fix it but if you uh, clear out a section and make sure you have one extra here, then you can actually just go through and repair it. So yeah. And yeah, there will end up being this one rail here will end up being straightened. However, unlike a piston bolt, this actually won't break it. So it just causes a very minor speed loss for just a very brief moment. However, for longer distances, uh, by far the easiest way to do this is with flying machines. Here I have three of them. Uh, these two 
curve rails. Uh, this one only works when going south or east, uh, but it is way simpler than the other, or maybe not way simpler, but simpler. Uh, but yeah, this one goes in any direction, and if you do build it, you need to make sure that the rails look like that when you place this, or else, yeah, it won't quite work. And same thing here, you have to make sure that all those rails are in place there. And then this flying machine here uh, is quite a lot more complicated than the other two, but it places the water. And, well, basically on bedrock, water and rails just don't get along very well, despite the fact that they can be waterlogged. So we have to be very careful here and have this water tank up here that we keep stocked with that dispenser. And then we have another dispenser right here that moves up and down two at a time, uh, almost like a sewing machine needle, to grab some water and place it down here. And that makes it so that it works even if you're waterlogging the rails. As for how it works, I'm not entirely certain. I built this like a year ago. And also I just now realized that you could make it a lot simpler if you just didn't want to waterlog the rails and just have this side. Anyways, one obvious use case for this would be for, well, getting around. And the fact that you can have two of them, like, right next to each other using the same water sources uh, is extra convenient because, well, yeah, you can have one go one way, the other goes the other way. Of course, this has one obvious downside. It doesn't work in the nether because it uses water. So, uh... Uh, yeah, so much for getting around fast, but if you want it as just a nice fast way to get around just within the overworld, then it can certainly do that. It goes twice as fast as golden rails, and actually going both ways requires less iron than using full golden rails requires gold. I mean, obviously, you'd not make it all golden rails, but you get the idea. However, water bolts actually have a lot more to offer. One really nice thing is that if you place golden rails like so, you can make it so that, well, first of all, the minecart just can't get derailed, but also, no matter where it is on the track, it is always going to have a constant force being applied in a single direction. And that's not really something you would get with just golden rails or with a piston bolt, as, well, with golden rails, they just keep it moving in the direction that it's already moving. Well, with a piston bolt, um, yeah, one slight nudge and the minecart falls off the track. So you could, for example, use this to gather minecarts into a single spot, and it would actually, you know, it does it very quickly. You know, even if they keep bumping into each other, they still very quickly make it all the way to the side. Though, uh, something that seems to be new, this didn't used to happen, but uh, before, putting the end rods here and the blocks on the back, of course it didn't happen this time, would make it so that the minecarts can't escape. But yeah, like I said, it didn't happen this time. Of course it didn't. But if we try it again, surely it will happen. Yeah, as you can see, it did escape. I don't know why that's suddenly happening now. I guess they can just clip through blocks. So that's cool. Here we have just one other possible way of getting it to work, where you just have the water stop right at the very edge. From what I can tell, the maximum speed isn't any lower when doing it this way. And with this version, um, even if the minecart got like heavily derailed way over to here, it'll still always be pushed right back onto the water bolt. One potential use case for this would be um, mob farming. Because, yeah, it makes sure that... Uh, even if it gets derailed, it will always just get right back on track, and it moves the minecarts pretty fast. So, yeah, even if it gets jammed up, it'll have that constant force being applied. So, yeah. Now, let's actually talk about the speed again, because there's actually another really neat property. So, first of all, the way I know the speed is I have this thing for just... It just drops arrows, so that you basically get a timeline of all the positions it was at. Um, yeah, and here we have five arrows every four blocks, and that pattern is very consistent, so that means that they're, that it is moving at 16 meters per second. Meanwhile, with an empty minecart, as you can see, 
we have just two arrows on every single block, which means that it moves at 10 meters per second. There is some slight oddities here and there, but yeah. But here's the really cool thing. You can actually limit the speed by placing blocks right here. And yeah, so in this case, it gets limited to just five meters per second. Uh, it is spending four game ticks on every single block. So yeah, much slower than the 16 from earlier. And by placing blocks with different hitboxes, you can get different results. For example, with Amethyst, this allows a full momentum cart to move at 10 meters per second. Now, speaking of 10 meters per second, that might sound like the perfect speed to have it travel over hoppers. Hoppers are only processed every other game tick. At least, I'm quite certain they are. A lot of my tests have confirmed that. I haven't fully confirmed it, but yeah. Uh, however, just due to the part where it straddles over two different blocks at once, uh, you can actually run it over hoppers at full speed, and every hopper will get an item. This brings up another potential use case, item distribution. Here I have at least an idea for a furnace array that even locks the hoppers. Uh, two different styles here. One would work with hopper minecarts. Maybe it might actually end up pulling out these items. And then this one would not use hopper minecarts, probably the more reliable version. Right now I have no intentions of actually following up with this. I have no idea if it would even be practical to use this. I mean, it moves twice as fast, but if that's practical or not, I don't know. Uh, to get these here, by the way, uh, it's a little bit weird. So first of all, you have to go either south or east, and you basically do just a double version of this, like so. And then if you want to go in the opposite direction, you build it going south or east, just like before, and then you go through and power them Anyways, that is all for today. World download in the description. But most of all, trans rights are human rights.